Hey everyone, just enjoying some sweet tea here. Today was my cheat day. Um, anyways, um, so today is just going to be a chatty video. I'm going to share some of the things that I picked up at the Little Rock Pen Show, share my experience with you guys. I do have a video that I'm going to be um, posting, but it's going to be about another week and a half. Um, my sisters and I are leaving tomorrow to head um, to Wisconsin to spend some time with my grandpa. Um, so it, I'm going to be gone for about a week. And it just, it's just—it's been super, super crazy. So I haven't forgot about you. It's been done, but I just haven't had a chance to get the live shot or the writing samples. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump into my video and share my experience with you guys and what I picked up. So if you've watched my goals that I have for 2016, I mentioned in there that I don't plan on purchasing any fountain pens outside of pen shows. And I've done really good. It hasn't been easy. It's been really tough. The first like month and a half was fine. Like honestly, it was. Um, but there was like a pen that came out that I was just like, oh, that would be, it's only $45, you know, but then I was like, nope, I can't purchase it. I'm not at a pen show. And another thing too is when I go, especially the Little Rock, with the Little Rock pen show being the first pen show that I went to this year, only the second pen show I've been to ever. So I'm no expert whatsoever. But I did have like a specific list of this is what I want as far as pens go. And knew I wanted to purchase some inks and I really wasn't like, I didn't have a specific color of ink or bottle of ink that I wanted to purchase. Well, there was one and it wasn't there at the show. So I had to wait until I got home and then I just ordered it online. Anyways, um, so as far as pens go, I wanted to do, I wanted to get the Fra a Franklin Kristoff pen and or a Sean Newton pen. And at the time, like I had a set budget that I could get one or the other. And I've been downsizing my pen collection. And so if I had sold any pens by the time the Little Rock Pen Show you know, rolled around, then I would be able to get both just because that was something that I was like, I'm going to use the money that, um, I've sold, you know, made from selling my pens to purchase the pens, um, at least one of them. So I was able to make that happen to where I was able to purchase both. And that's also what I plan on doing for the DC trip. My husband and I, we've started a little fund for that. And then I'm also picking up a part-time job where that's going to help with all of that. So it's really exciting. I'm excited about the DC pen show. Um, but again, off of that, onto Little Rock, I had a specific goal in mind. And I almost like deterred from that because there was one pen that I was so close of purchasing, but I had, there's something that had happened and it just, it fell through and it just, it's not meant to be. And so in a sense, I am glad, but on the other hand, I'm really, really sad because it was a Pelican M800 in brown tortoise, which in one hand, I'm glad and thankful for because I did have an um, a Pelican M805, but it was just, it wasn't uncomfortable. I just, I like the M400s, just a personal preference. So off of that, um, so when I got there on Friday, I walked in and I really didn't know what to expect. Honestly, I didn't know if it was going to be a lot like the Dallas Pen Show as far as size and the amount of people that were going to be there. And it's not like at all. And I'm not saying it in a bad way whatsoever. There were a lot less people at the Little Rock Pen Show. It was smaller than the Dallas. Um, and I just remember like at the Dallas Pen Show when I first like walked in and seen it was very like overwhelming and like a sensory overload because it's just like there's so 
many people, there's so many vendors, there's so many pens that it was really hard to process all of it all at once. And I didn't feel that way at all at the Little Rock Pen Show because there weren't a lot of people and there weren't as many vendors. Um, so for me, like I didn't have that overwhelming sense of like, I don't even know where to begin, that sort of thing. Um, I, but I did know where I wanted to start as far as the the pen show went in Little Rock. So I went straight to the Franklin Kristoff um, table there and was able to play around with some pens and nibs and different things like that and just look at all the pens that they had there. And I ended up, I'll show you here what I had got. I got this little pocket 40 and I got um, a customized needlepoint nib for it. So it was really, really nice because there were only two pens at the um, Little Rock Pen Show that were made with this material. And it is very, very petite, but posts really well. And I wouldn't recommend writing with it not posted because it just... I mean, you can, but even for me, it's just a little uncomfortable. So it posts very well, rests nice in the hand, has a nice long section on it. So I really like that. And then here's like a size comparison as far as like my hand. Um, but really, really nice. It's super comfortable to write with. And one of the things I will say about having the needlepoint nib, like at first I was kind of, I, w I had been wanting to get one, but I just wasn't for sure like how I would feel about it just because I tend to lean more towards like a medium or a broad or even an italic nib just because I like the, I just, I, I like those types of nibs. That's just what I prefer. But I did want to get a needle point just because it was something that I didn't have anything like it in my collection, but like, cause even the needle point to me is more fine than my Pilot Metropolitan. So I just wanted something that was a little bit different. So if I did have an ink, I mean, you can put any type of ink that you want in the pen, but if I had an ink that wasn't, didn't have a whole lot of sheen or anything like that, I can put it in my needle point and not have to worry about, you know, the beauty of the ink being lost in the nib. I, I know I'm weird like that, but that's just me. Anyways, so I, I went ahead and purchased that pen. That was the very first pen purchase of 2016 for me. And I was super, super excited. And then I went straight to Sean Newton's um, table there. Um, well, no, hold off. Before I went there, I did go to the um, Danny Fuller's table, the right pen, because I had um, two Parker Vacumatics where it was one of the pens that I've just recently sold. Um, but here's this one here. I believe this one is in the junior size. It's just a little bitty. Um, but the other one was more, it was the standard size. And the reason why I had sold that one, it was just, it had a super dry nib, but I didn't know that until I got it fixed. So that's why they went to see Danny Fuller there at the right pen. He does, um, restoration work on vintage pens. And so when I had both purchased, especially the one in the standard that I bought it, purchased it off of eBay, and it said it was restored and it wasn't and needed a new diaphragm, as did this one here. And so went ahead and got that fixed. And so went there. Then I went to Sean Newton's table and he had all the like the models that he made, the different pen models that he made. And he had um, several different blanks and materials. And of course, like material wise for a customized pen, it's endless. It really is. Um, so I went to his table and I knew which model that I had wanted. Just didn't know if I wanted a customized nib grind. I didn't know what kind of material. So I did get put on his waiting list. 
and that should be started in the middle of July, end of July. So really excited about that. And at the time, I wasn't for sure if I was going to be able to come back on Saturday. Um, Vanus, they had a booth set up there, but when I was there first thing in the morning, their inks weren't out. They did have like their little station where you could test and try some of the different inks that they have. Um, anyways, I knew like there was a certain ink that I wanted to purchase from them, and so it wasn't there yet. So I was like, well, if I don't get to come back tomorrow, I guess I can just order it, or next time that I'm in town, I can just stop by their store and pick it up there. No big deal. Um, and then right next to Shanu, which I will... Oh, I don't know if I showed you. Here is his card. Has all of his information on there. Has his website, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, address, telephone number, all that good jazz. So if you're interested or you want to see his work, you can go ahead and follow him on there. And I will share with you guys. Um, well, I'll wait just a moment before I get sidetracked. His wife also makes... Um, customized pen wraps. I know she has an Instagram, um, but right next to them, there was a gentleman and a young lady there. The young lady made um, like um, homemade like journal covers and different. They were really, really neat and very interesting. And then this gentleman here, Derek, um, he makes leather um, notebook or yeah, leather journal covers right there um and here's the back i'll just because it's the glit it's d w r d studios so anyway you can check him out and so um it's really really neat this is made out of this is a beautiful red um saddle leather and it's really interesting because mine's unique. It has like the brand um, from the actual cow or horse, whatever. Um, so anyways, and then I also purchased the A5 size leather journal. And I just, I love, love, love this color. I have a pair of boots actually that is like this exact color and at first I was only going to get like the back pocket size and then was going to just wait to order like the bigger size and anyways he said this was the last of that um, that color that he had so once it was gone it was gone and his supplier that he had purchased from They didn't have this anymore. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and gonna get both because I know I'm going to use both of them and So I went ahead and picked up both of the leather journal co um, covers Really that was my only like impulse buy when I was there at the, the Little Rock Pen Show, but I was in a pen, so I did good. And um, so on Saturday, I was able to come back and was able to bring my middle sister. My youngest sister was supposed to come with me, but she wasn't able to get off work. So it was quite funny because my middle sister, she's intrigued with found pens, she just doesn't get the concept yet because she's just like, how could you spend that much money on a pen? Like, really? And she held up like a, a, a regular pen, chibi pen, and she's like, this does the same thing. And I was like, uh, no, it doesn't. So anyways, I was like, hey, since you're going to be getting off work, why don't you come up? and come to the pen show because she does she'll sit and play with my my fountain pens and she does very good i have heard horror stories of people that aren't accustomed to fountain pens so i just tell her don't use any pressure don't press down hard or you're gonna cry when i send you the bill to replace my nib <laughs> um, but she does very very well and i'm actually thinking about getting her a pilot metropolitan for her birthday because I did ask her if you had a fountain pen would you use it and she said oh yeah because they're cool so anyway I think 
I think she'll get it. Um, she just might be one of those that just gets has her one pilot metropolitan and and does it that way. So anyway, nothing wrong with that. Um, so it was just fun to get to share part of that with her. And so my mission on Saturday was to get ink. That's what I was there to get on Saturday. And so when I had ordered and and bought my Franklin Kristoff, we ended up ink filling the pen up with their um, Midnight Emerald. Because it was an, em uh, an eyedropper, we went ahead and filled it just to make sure everything was okay, that sort of thing. And I loved the ink after using it. And so I was just like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to purchase a bottle of it. So I did. And here's the bottle, Midnight Emerald. And I have a little swab. It's not going to be like the best, but there you go. Again, it's not going to be the best, but it's really, really pretty. It has this nice sheen to it. And then the ink that I picked up from Van Ness was the Ackerman, and I got the number 26. And this is such a beautiful green. I, I've been telling a couple of my pen pals, it's this green right here, that I'm in this like green phase. I've just been really loving green, bluish green inks. I just, I don't know what it is. You can't go wrong. And then I also picked up this bottle, if you can see, by Paper Plume and Burgundy. They're, uh, they're bottled in New Orleans, so it was really nice. That was one of the vendors that was talking to me because he had several different like fountain pens and different stuff like that. Um, but it was talking to me about the ink and the pens and, and all of that, so it was really, really cool. And so this is the ink swab that I took of that. I haven't actually used that one yet in a fountain pen, but I do have my swab there. So I liked how, how pretty it is. Just really, really, really nice. So those were the three inks that I picked up while I was there um, at the pen show. And then I was able to go back and talk to Sean some more and show my sister the model that I was going to get. And while I was there, I, this is what I was going to show you, it, which it's not going to show up and do any justice whatsoever, but it does get you an, give you an idea. He had this section there, and this is a purple ripple ebonite. And here on Instagram, it's some pretty purple German ebonite. And I seen that, um, which I knew on Friday, with my customized pen, I was gonna do an Ebonite because I was doing the Majestic model and I wanted to do Ripple. I just wasn't sure which color, just because it's it's stunning. And when I seen that section, I was just like, that's it. That's what my pen is going to be made out of. It is stunning, it is beautiful. It's just, it's perfect, really. And so anyways, then I got to sit there and he had a couple of his customized nibs that are nib grinds that he had done. So I was able to use a couple of them and narrow down what I wanted. So I'm going to be getting the Majestic in the Purple Ripple Ebonite with a black oxidized medium cursive italic nib. So July cannot get here fast enough. I am super, super excited um, about that pen. So that is all of my my purchases. Oh, and I'll go ahead and share with you. If you're interested, there's the paper plume. They have all sorts of stuff. So that is the address, website, all of that. So you have that there for you if you're interested in checking their stuff out. Um, so yeah, my experience, it was really nice. It was nice getting to talk to, um, you know, Sean and the gentleman at the Franklin Kristoff table um, a lot more than I would have at like the Dallas Penn Show because I did spend time at the Franklin Kristoff table, but because there were so many people there, you really couldn't have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So it was just really nice to, to get to talk to them and 
you know, get to share like your experiences and even was able to show Sean my customized pens. And of course you recognize Renee's work like right off the bat. Um, so it was, it was nice just getting to talk to him um, and it, sharing the experience with my sister. So I will say it is a lot smaller than Dallas. So if you're interested in going to a pen show that's on a smaller scale, I would recommend the Little Rock um, pen show. There weren't a whole lot of vendors, but there still were a lot of things to choose from. And I will share another thing that I purchased, which it was a rollerball pen, but I picked it up as a gift for my dad. Um, it was made out as like a um, like a rifle type. Anyway, he thought it was really, really cool. My dad's a truck driver, and so it's something that he can take with him all the time and be able to have with him. So anyways, those were all my purchases. That was my experience. And I just, I enjoyed it not having to feel like, you know, you're being not pushed out of the way because you weren't, but it just, it wasn't busy. It wasn't fast paced. So you were able to spend your time and just really look at everything. And I didn't feel like, oh my goodness, there's so many people here. And um, cause sometimes I can get that, like where it's, it is a sensory overload and you're just like, okay, I've, I've got to leave and diffuse myself from this situation and then try this again. And that's kind of what I had to do at Dallas. It was, had to take some time because it was a lot to process. Whereas this, it was nice just to take your time. There was no rush. Um, you know, I knew what I wanted. I knew what I wanted to get. And of course, like Danny and his buddy at the right on um, the right pen table, it was nice to get to talk to them again because I was able to meet them at the Dallas Pen Show as well. So all in all, I had a great experience. I don't think for me personally, it's not going to be a show that I go to every single year. I think Dallas is going to be the one um, that I that I go to every year just because I have a pen pal that I get to catch up with and and that sort of thing so I just think that's going to be like the one for me that I go to year after year so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any questions or comments go ahead and leave them down below um, please don't forget to like this video and if you haven't already please subscribe um, we'll be talking with you guys later. Have a good night. Bye now.